The man depicted here was arguably a cut above the other stone carvers he worked with. But acknowledging that required a rewriting of the history of one of our nation's most beloved monuments. Jim Axelrod takes us to the Black Hills of South Dakota. Mount Rushmore's designer, Gutzon Borglum, once said he hoped the faces would remain unchanged until the wind and rain alone shall wear them away. The monument, carved into granite, was designed to be as enduring as it was inspiring. And the team that created this memorial exemplifies the perseverance of the American spirit. Which is why this ceremony held yesterday was so remarkable as the National Park Service marked a change at Mount Rushmore. Three, two, one. A small but significant revision to the story of its creation. 48 years after his death, an Italian immigrant named Luigi Del Bianco was officially recognized as Mount Rushmore's chief carver. So there he is, performing a little surgery. Yeah, it is plastic surgery. On Thomas Jefferson. <laughs> yeah, it's really granite surgery. As Luigi Del Bianco's grandson, Lou, explained to us, the chief carver was the master craftsman in charge of refining the expression in the faces. So the twinkle mm -hmm. in Lincoln's eye. Yep. Or Jefferson's lips. Yep. That's Luigi Del Bianco's work? Yes. Since Rushmore's completion in 1941, the 400 laborers had always been saluted as a group. But for the last 30 plus years, the Del Bianco family had been making the case Luigi wasn't just part of the crowd. If we're looking at Rushmore, what of Luigi Del Bianco's work am I seeing that separates him out and makes him deserving of his own plaque? Well, when people tell me their impression of the faces, they say that there's a humanity. There's a humanity in that granite. And I'm convinced that my grandfather helped bring that humanity out. Trained in Italy as a stone carver, Luigi Del Bianco came to America in 1908 at the age of 16, settling eventually in Port Chester, New York, where he opened a business. So in Port Chester, New York, there are headstones carved by the same man who did Rushmore? Yeah, and I can't tell you how many times an older person in town would say, can you believe it? The man who carved the president's faces carved my mother's headstone. Unbelievable. Lou Del Bianco grew up knowing all about his grandfather's special role at Rushmore. What do we have in here? Well, those are about 75 documents from the Library of Congress. Including testimony from Gutz and Borglum. He is worth any three men I can find in America for this particular type of work here and now. This is Borglum's writing. Oh, yeah. But nothing Lou showed the Park Service would change the narrative. At least not until Cam Shawley took over the regional office in charge of Rushmore. You know, there's a, uh, a pay sheet that has his name, Chief Carver, $1.50 an hour. The more Shawley read of what Lou sent him, the more he realized the story of Rushmore needed rewriting. I found myself wondering if, if we should change course here. So Shawley dispatched a couple of National Park Service historians to Lou's basement in Port Chester. They went through the booklet that I showed you. By the fourth page, one of the historians said, well, you sold me, let's go have lunch. And after years of making Luigi's case, the official policy was overturned. We have Luigi Del Bianco in that visitor center. I mean, with pictures of him, his name's in there. We just haven't called him Chief Carver, and now we will. Well, now we all know Gustan Borglum, of course, but he didn't do it alone. There were about 400 people who helped him. The decision made at headquarters may take a little while to filter down to the tours. We got this recognition coming to Luigi Del Bianco. It's kind of a neat part of the story, isn't it? I don't know that part of the story, so I can't say. Are you going to have to brush up on Luigi? Well, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe. But Lou Del Bianco isn't concerned knowing he's got history on his family's side, and now a plaque to prove it. 